So what we've got so far is a very rudimentary interface, nothing really uh, visually interesting, but uh, structure-wise, we've got the, the main ideas, input boxes, and buttons to do stuff. Everything that will follow then is JavaScript in order for us to be able to um, do all of these operations. So let's... Um, I believe it's going to matter the order. So these in these buttons here, these these two event handlers were handling clicks on buttons. These two event handlers, I'm going to say they they will always be the last two items in the script. So that means what we're about to type, always keep it above above them. So these two will be at the end because we're going to define a bunch of variables and functions and such. And if we try to uh, maybe call a certain function that hasn't been defined yet, we might get a problem. So I want to have the button clicks as, as the last items. So we'll start at the top. This is line uh, 21. What we're going to start to talk about is... Actually, I wanted to look something up, but... Um, okay, so what we'll do is uh, the very first thing here is var. We're going to create a variable, and variables are so powerful they can hold numbers, letters, uh, words, objects, basically. And an object can be a very complex thing, as we're about to create right now. And this object, this variable, can have any name we want. We'll just call it db for database so that we don't have to type a lot. But that's going to be the database. That's going to be where we store all of our, of our data, uh, basically. And so equals, because we're creating the variable and at the same time we're filling it, uh, we're putting data into the it, and we will type new space. And then it, with this syntax, pouch, capital P, pouch, db, capital DB, open close parentheses, semicolon. So it shouldn't turn into any special colors. New is blue and var is blue, db is black, and pouch db parentheses is black. This pouch db is a built-in command that makes sense when we've got line seven. When we've got the reference to the jQuery uh, to the pouch db JavaScript library. Built into it are a bunch of commands, and one of them is PouchDB. So we're creating a new object, PouchDB. And we have to, according to the documentation, also say a name of a database that will be stored internally into our browser. The browser is what's going to save the database itself. Whereas the question was, how does, uh, what's the difference between Couch and Pouch? Couch needs a server for us to create databases. Pouch uses whatever web browser is in play. Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Internet Explorer, the Android browser, etc. And so we need to define inside of the parentheses, in quotes, we need to make up any name we want of a database. We'll call this SDCE Classes, capital C. You can just call it Classes. Maybe not Classes, that might be a reserved word. SDCE Classes. And I wanted to look something up during the break, but I'll look it up briefly right now. Um, the the creation of the database gives us um, gives us feedback. Every time we do something, we always get some feedback. And I just wanted to look briefly. If I don't see it right away, don't worry. But I wanted to see about checking the feedback that we successfully created one just so that we so that we see it in action. No. 
let's try this then. Okay, so we've uh, we've supposedly created a database, but uh, there's a couple of ways to check it, and here's one way. I just copied this from from the website, but let's let's try this. On the next line, we're going to write db.info. Let's retrieve some info about the database. So info is a built-in command to pouch. We chain another command, then try to get some info, and then with the info, do the following. Run an anonymous function with the info that we just got and put it in the console. Info. Actually, let's change that instead of console.log, we'll change it to an alert. We just want a big old obvious alert. Um, I copied and pasted it, but make make sure here you've got info open close parentheses, then open close parentheses semicolon. Then we've got function open curly brace, close curly brace. And here it's close curly brace, close parentheses, semicolon, end of line, end of statement. Let's save it and run it. We're going to get used to opening up the console. Let me remind you in a moment about the console. So go ahead and type this. Actually, never mind. Console, we've got it on alert. So it should happen as soon as we as we as soon as we load the page. Go ahead and save it and run it. We should get a big pop-up with some info. Okay, that's fine. Okay, let's... Um if you did alert, it just pops up with some not that useful info, actually. It says, object, object. Mm. Did you guys get that? Did you save it and run it? You get a pop-up that says, object, mm. object. Right when it starts? Yes. Yeah. Let me run that again. Right when it starts, pop-up. Object, object. Mm. Did everyone get that? Not a very useful um, output, but this is enough of a proof of concept that we can sort of say we have successfully created a database. Because obviously many things could go wrong in any of our code. And built into the PouchDB standard, the API, is a, is a method called info. Let's retrieve the info of the database. Then we displayed it as an alert box, which was not that useful looking. Instead, I'm going to put it back like what the example had, console.log. Because we're going to be using the console a lot for debugging, for testing. We want to get used to using the console. Let's change that line 23 back to console.log. And now, when I save and run Chrome, I won't get any I won't get any feedback on screen. I'm in Chrome. I just ran it. Nothing happened. What you want to do now is get used to on the keyboard press F12 on your number rows. F12. Press F12, and you'll probably get a side panel here. It might be on Elements. We've got various tabs there, Elements, Network, etc. And then you might have that double arrow. Click the double arrow, Console. I want to display the console. This is where we're going to see errors and such. A lot of you have gotten used to that when you're checking your JavaScript. You check your console, helps you find your error. But now here in the console, I have something that says Object, little triangle. Click on that. 
and we get all of this info about our database. Did everyone did everyone get some console output like this? Just uh, I'll help you one moment with your error. Yes. What was the question there? I'll help you with your error one. Okay, so um, putting this console.log gives us what I wanted more to see rather than the alert. But this is just to prove did it work to create a database? Did new PouchDB work? Because here in the console now, no, no pop-up happened, but in the console it said object, and if you open that up, here's some information about the object. Database name, that's what we just created. Doc count, document count, there aren't any documents in the database. Nothing has been saved to the database yet. And on a technical level, adapter is indexed DB. There's uh, about uh, three different ways, I believe, to create databases in a web browser. One of them is indexed DB. So the default is that our type of database technically is an index DB. Uh, we can create other kinds of databases, but the default works. Update sequence. We haven't updated the database yet, so it's on zero. Attachments are in binary format. Auto compaction is false. The database will not compact itself by automatic means. And then a whole bunch of other deep, deep deep details here that you never have to really worry about. But anyway, the point of this is to show, yes, we created a database. The pouch command info worked. We retrieved information about the database. This is not the only place where we can see data about our database. In Firefox, 
uh, in Chrome, I mean, we have a built-in way to do it as well here. Uh, I'm going to just expand this so that I can see my whole row of, of screens over here. I, I don't want anything cut off, but I'm just going to expand it out to, so I can see all my tabs. Now go to the tab, Resources. Resources will show you all the cookies that Chrome has saved, all of the local storage objects that uh, Chrome has saved, and all of the databases that we've saved through Pouch, which are where? In the yes, but specifically on this screen. In the index DB view. If you open the index DB, because remember the console said this is an index DB database, IDB. Resources. Show me the index DBs. Right there. It will automatically add underscore pouch underscore to any database created via pouch DB. You can have as many as you want here. Each of them could be 200 megabytes. So you're not limited to one database of 200. Uh, you can have as many as, as you want of 200 each. Then the name that we put, we had new PouchDB SECE classic. There it is. But it always has a preface, a preface of p underscore pouch. Open that triangle there. Here's other ways to actually see the data in the database. The console output just told us, okay, we've got a database. It doesn't have any documents. Let's say we had 10, and we have 10 updates. But it, this doesn't show you what's in the database. Resources, and here are different ways to see what's actually in the database. And one of the easiest ways will be right here, by sequence. When we actually add something, we will see it right here. It'll show us what, what number object in the database from zero to infinity. What's the key and what's the value? That's the JSON data that we're going to be saving. So we'll get back to this screen, but this is a very important screen we're going to look at now. We're going to get used to using console, of course, for debugging and troubleshooting, and we're going to use resources, index DB, to look at the actual data of the database, because when we get complex, as I've said before, we have basically two kinds of errors, syntax errors and logic errors. The console is great for syntax errors. Whoops, extra parentheses. Whoops, I spelled on wrong. And we have logic errors, which are harder to spot because all my code is right, but oh, I was checking between 0 and 5 instead of between 1 and 5, or 1 and 6, or whatever. That's a logic error, and that could be harder to troubleshoot. So if we actually see what are we putting into the database, that might help us figure out what's going on. Yes? When the storage link uh, index database is stored in sequential, is it like index sequential? Yes, it'll put them, uh, it'll put them in here all sequentially. Uh, so if we added three names, Bob, Adam, and Charlie, in that order. Bob would be first, and then Adam, then Charlie. They would be stored out of order in the database. But we have operations built into Pouch that will then say, display them in alphabetical order. So they're, they're stored in Sequential. the order. Yes, they're yeah. stored in the order. Interesting. Yes. Because there's no way to know beforehand, oftentimes, what's the order of things. Mm -hmm. We just store it all sequentially, and then we can manipulate it, display it in such any sequence we want. So it doesn't maintain an index. It just stores these things sequentially. It maintains an index in, in just the most basic way, in that each one will have an index number, yes, from 0, 1, 2, 3, infinity. Mm -hmm. So John may be 7 and then Adam maybe eight, so it will have an index number, um, just not in any order. But they're, they're displayed in key sequence. They're just, no, they're displayed, no, they're displayed in number sequence, in, in, in the index sequence, not the key, because the key could be the name of the person or um, the date and so forth, which doesn't technically need to be added in an order, 
it's going to be stored in this in the in the index sequence this basic 0 to infinity so uh, continuing here uh, it doesn't matter but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this db.info to one line I'm going to move db.info console log and then the close of that to one line doesn't matter, you don't have to do it, but I will just so that I can kind of clean up my space a little bit here. I don't need three whole lines for that. One line is good enough. If you're unsure about that, save it and run it. You should get no errors. You'll notice it's just one line now. I just move console up and the closing, don't forget the closing curly brace of parentheses, just one line. Okay, next line, 23. We've created a database, and now what we want to do are um, create the functionality for um, adding classes and so forth. Um, so we're going to create a bunch of function definitions line 23. Function. First we'll do one called clear fields. We already have a button on screen that the user can click that clears the fields. If they want to start over, they click clear, start over. But we want to be able to do that also programmatically. And that just means <coughs> via a command. We want a command in the code to do that as well. <coughs> so we've got a clear fields function. And what this will do is <coughs> we'll have dollar parentheses quotes <clears throat> what's the name of our field again of our form that is class form line 11 has a form and we've named it class form and it's an ID so pound class form don't forget the pound we're saying, okay, on that form, let's do something to it. At the end, we'll do dot reset, parentheses. There's a built-in uh, JavaScript method. I believe it's JavaScript. It might be, I think it's maybe jQuery. No, it is, it is JavaScript, plain JavaScript. This will reset any form. That's the form. Well, that's very similar to what we've already got on line 15. But again, we're going to do stuff such as, okay, the person's going to type in a name and all of that and press Submit, Add Class. And I want those form fields to be cleared to add another class. Uh, so we will call this clear fields function whenever we need to clear the fields uh, as a result of some other action. We don't want the person themselves to click the button to clear. So that's just kind of cleaning things up there. Next line, a new function here. Add class. Add class. This is a function called add class. The purpose of this function is to add a class to the database.
And so a class is made up of those three fields, the CRN number, the title of the class, and the instructor. So we're going to create a variable and <clears throat> many uh, documentation recommends that when you create variables via jQuery you put a dollar symbol so dollar symbol class CRN no because what I'm doing here is very is is if I had simply done var class CRN um, I'm creating a variable and I'm naming it dollar class CRN because I'm going to use jQuery in a moment to retrieve a value. This would be as if I didn't use jQuery. It's a little minor thing. This is pretty much optional, but in, in a lot of documentation you see this because at a glance Whenever I use this variable anywhere else, if it has a dollar, I'm going to say, oh, that was jQuery. So it's optional, and I'm going to give it a try. My, my example in the end doesn't have this, so this is going to differ a little bit from the end, but if it doesn't work, we'll just not use it. Further, we're going to say equals. So this is simply creating a variable, but it's going to be a jQuery variable, so we've got the dollar. The variable is going to be filled with whatever the person types on the CRN field um, on screen. So on screen, we would do the dollar again, parentheses, <clears throat> in quotes, pound symbol CRN field. What's happening there? See how I have it up here on my, my screen. On screen, there's some object called CRN field. There it is. Whatever line number that is, CRN label, text name, CRN field. When someone types in a CRN number into that field, grab it and store it in this variable. Well, we have to specifically say when someone types something into that field. So it's dot value give me the value that a person types into that and like I said I'm changing this from the original so let me just try something really fast here to see if I'm not going to confuse you all so Sometimes it's useful to <clears throat> change things for the future. Let me just try something here. You know what, never mind. Uh, let's not do it this way because I, I would need to confirm a couple of things and I don't want to get off track from what I've got in the example. So just let's delete that. Let's do it the way that I do have in the example. So never mind, let's delete that line. We'll do via we'll do var. Without the dollar, class CRN equals document dot get element by ID quotes CRN field 
dot value. So there's the J there's the classic JavaScript way to do it, and then there's the jQuery way to do it. Um, this is the classic JavaScript. A moment ago, I was going to do the jQuery, but I forgot to look it up uh, before the break, so I don't want to go on the wrong tangent. So this is the classic way. We're saying on screen there is an ID, CRM field, up there. Let's get its value and let's put it into this variable. Then we're going to do the same thing for the other two boxes. For those other two input fields. So I'm going to copy the same code and paste it two more times. But this time, I'm creating a variable called class title. Get element by ID title field. Class title field value. And the next one, uh, class instructor. instructor field. Next line We'll say console.log class CRN. No quotes, because I want to display whatever the person typed into class CRN. And title and instructor. So, same thing. So I'm just retrieving what the person typed into each of these fields and storing them in three variables. And then, to see if it's working, I'm showing the, what the person typed in the console. This is a proof of concept that I'm accepting user input. In order for any of this to work, we need to we need to execute the add class function. We have add class event handler waiting to be clicked. So now instead of line whatever that is, alert it works. I'm going to change that. Alert works. I'm going to remove that and instead make it call add class. So line 34. Instead of alert, delete that. You should delete it so that it's only the curly braces. The curly braces are for the function. And then parenthesis, which is for the whole on method. And now instead, in the curly braces, add class. Parentheses. So let's let's see if this is working so far. Check your check your code here. How it should work is you save it and run it. Type something on each of those three boxes, anything you want, and then click the Add Class button and check your console to see if you see the three things you typed in those boxes.
Let's see. I'm going to open my console right away because I know I want to look into it. Um, okay, I'm going to type whatever in the first box and the second, doesn't matter just yet. Add class, click. There we go. It took what I typed into each of those boxes and just displayed it in the console. Does anyone need any help? That's what should happen so far. Yes, right here. Retrieve the data, display the data in the console. And then make that happen, trigger that by then calling the add class function on a click to the button. So, um, does that work for everyone? Anyone need any help with that? Okay, let me help you right now.
All right, so um, we're getting there. We're we're capturing the data. We're capturing the data from the from the input boxes. What we're going to do with that data then is we're going to put it into the database. But we've captured these three pieces of information and all of these three pieces should be one package because these three things define a class, a class at the college. These three things define one class, the, the class number, CRN, the instructor, and the title. So we're going to kind of bundle all three of them together in JSON format. Then it's in JSON format, and then we're going to put it in the database to store it permanently. Right now, as a variable, it's not permanent. What's permanent is local storage, which we learned on month one, and what's permanent is PouchDB, or JSON data. Those two are permanent. A plain old variable disappears as soon as you close the website, close the app. So we're going to store it permanently in the database. Next line after these consoles. Well, before that, let's... no, never mind. So. We're going to put them into. We're going to put them. We're going to bundle all three of these pieces of information. So, we'll create another variable. The variable will be a class, capital C. This variable here is going to store all three of those sub variables. Equals in JSON format. Remember, curly braces, close curly brace, semicolon. The curly braces mean, in this case, that it is going to be JSON. We saw that when we did social.json, opening, closing curly braces. So now, inside of these curly braces is a JSON object. I'm going to tab it, and I'm going to say the, re the only required one. We're going to put this 
JSON object into the database of pouch. And the only field that it requires always is ID, space, colon, space. We always need an ID, always written like that, underscore ID. That's the unique identifier that will identify this from every other, um, from the records in the database. And the unique identifier, we're going to use the class CRN. Whatever the person typed as a class CRN is the unique one, because that's how it actually works. There's only one class in the whole semester that has that one CRN number. There may be two classes on Facebook, Facebook for advanced, Facebook for beginners, but they all, but each of them has a unique CRN number. Comma, enter, because we're going to add another field to the uh, to the JSON object. Um, simply title colon space class title. Now we're not using quotes in any of these. Because the um, the pouch documentation, the pouch standard, has it like that, but it's still the same syntax. Key value. One more. Comma. We'll just call this to save some typing. Inst. And that one is class instructor. It's the last item, so no more comma. Where are these coming from? Right there, bar, bar, bar. Where are those coming from? Whatever the person typed into the input fields. Take all three of them, bundle them in one variable called a class. You don't need an underscore before title or instructor, just before the ID. That's right, just before the ID. There is another field that, if we use it, does have an underscore, which is revision, when we do updates. That will be later. Um, I think if we wanted to, we can put underscores there. I have to confirm on the documentation, but I do know that the ID is the one that needs the underscore. Why would you do that? PouchDB.com, the documentation explains this one needs to be here and written this way. Everything else, we can write it our own way. Um, just say, what's the other one like besides the ID that you need an underscore after? When we get to it, eventually, it's one called underscore rev. Oh, rev. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So don't worry about that one yet. When we get to revisions and updating, it's rev. Okay, so we've bundled all of this together, and then let's put it in the database. So, next line. db dot put open close parentheses. But this is going to be a little complex, so actually I'm going to divide up the parentheses a couple of lines like that. I'm about to use the put command, which is invented by PouchDB. I'm going to use the put command put some data into that database, db. So in the parentheses, we'll say a class. We're going to put this object with these three fields into the database, comma, space. Um, documentation tells us that whenever we put something into the database, we can have two results, a positive or a negative result. Either it went into the database or it didn't. So either, either a good result or an error. Those are the two results oftentimes with many of this stuff, either yes or no. It worked or it didn't. So therefore, after the comma, we have to deal with, was it a positive result? Was it a negative result? So we'll say function open close parentheses, curly brace, close curly brace. And actually I'm going to move that second curly brace to its own line. Like that. So 
So it was open, curly brace, closed curly brace, but I moved it down here. And that closing one, parentheses, is from put. So that one closes that one. That one closes that one. So here under, we're going to back up into function. The documentation of pouch tells us there's either an error or a positive result. Error, comma, space, result. These can, oops, these, where did I go? These can be anything we want, and the documentation sometimes calls it error, sometimes error, E-R-R, and result, or data. It calls it different things because it can be different things. I, I believe in my, in my example I've kept it consistent, either error or result. But the point is, the pouch documentation tells us this is the syntax. We're always going to have something dot put. It can be DB, it can be my database, anything dot put. What are we putting into the database? We're calling it a class, but this can be anything. Comma, a function. Um, these two things can be named anything. We're calling it error and result. The error, the positive result. Curly braces. So that's the, that's the basic syntax. That's the skeleton of this command of putting something into the database. Uh, next, we then actually check: did we did we put in, in did we put in the positive result, or did we put in or did did we get back a positive result or a negative result? This, in short, is a is a callback function. What happens after we try to put the data into the database? inside line 39 this is where we decide let's deal with the error if it happened let's deal with the positive result if that happened so literally if open close parentheses open curly brace enter close curly brace be careful here close curly brace for if close curly brace for function we will see it looking like this. Curly, parentheses, curly, curly. Get used to, if you're not there yet, get used to clicking on your parentheses in, in, in Notepad for it to highlight it and tell you where it ends and where it starts. If it doesn't look like how you think, you might have a problem. So simply clicking on parentheses or curly brace will tell you its pair. But anyway, we've got if, line 41, else, open curly brace, close curly brace. This is to check if one result or else the other result happens. We've talked about if and else statements before. We're going to use them a lot for this exercise because we're going to need to check a lot of things. So in this if, we can do it multiple ways. We're going to check if we got a positive result. We'll just type result. Put will either give us error or result. We're going to check. Did we get result? Which means positive result. Inside here we will say alert added to database. Else means we didn't get result, positive result. 
else mean, meant, then we must have then gotten the error. So we will then say alert, error, not in quotes, because I want it to pop up with the error that it's giving me. Um, the cool thing about all of this, not just PouchDB, but the cool thing about callback functions is oftentimes they're programmed in a way to give you some sort of feedback. This is built into Pouch, it's built into jQuery, it's built into a particular library. What's, what are the results of the callback function? In Pouch, the specification says we have either an error or a result. So I want an alert that pops up. What's that error message? Um, so let's see at this point if it works. Oh, sorry, yeah. Semicolon. End of end of statement. Not a colon. Let's save it and run it and see what we get here. Let me check mine. In theory, what should happen? I'm going to pull up Chrome here. I'm just going to type whatever. Let's type some stuff. Anything in these. I'm going to click uh, Add Class. I get a pop-up added to DB. And the console says that. I'm going to confirm it also by looking now at my resources, index DB, pouch, by sequence, data in the database. Sequence index value 0, first key, there's the data I just typed in, the title, um, the instructor, inst and other stuff. I'm going to try that again. I'm going to put something correct. One, two, three, title, Android, instructor, campus. Add class. I get the pop-up that says add it to DV. Close that. This database doesn't update right away. There's a refresh button at the bottom. Now I've got key 2, index value 1, title Android, instructor campus, um, rev, and so forth. Right there, rev, 1, 2, 3. Does that make sense? Did it work for you? Raise your hand if it worked. Very cool. Anyone need a little help? If we got it to work at this point, let's let's take a break, actually. This is a big breakthrough. It's 8.20. Let's take 10-minute break. 8.30. Let me put my code back up here. If you need some help, call me over. I'm not sure why my...